Hello everyone, welcome to the video series of NAT configuration on Checkpoint Firewall. I hope you have seen last two videos. Therein uh, we discussed some basic concepts how we can implement source NAT and destination NAT. So in this video we will see uh, some advanced concepts related to NAT. Let's see what exactly is the task for this video. So it says for this task remove default route from R1 and R2. Okay and then configure NAT so that R1 loopback should be able to access R2 loopback so it's, it, it looks simple so we need to first remove the routes and then we need to simply access R2 loopback from R1 loopback okay go to that test machine oh okay let me see my VPN connection VPN is up then let me try again okay Let me log into. I hope no one has booked a slot on this time. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so go to R1 and configuration mode, delete protocol static route 0, .0, .0, .0, .0 and then commit. Commit and then go to R2 as well. Delete protocol static route. Somebody's I, I feel somebody has slot at this time, so that is the reason I'm getting frequent disconnect. Give me a second, let me see who is doing lab. Okay, someone was using the lab. Uh, now we should not see more disconnection. So we were uh, discussing, mm -mm. first routing has to be removed. So R1, we do not have any default route. And if you go to R2, again, we do not have any route. So task says, let me go back and read the task. Now task says, R1 loopback should be able to access R2 loopback. But now if we do not have a route, I cannot simply go ahead and write 160.1.1 interface 150.1.1.1 so we cannot do that because there is no route now this r1 can only reach or uh, let me go to r1 so, so now this r1 can only reach these submits 136 150.1.1.0 and 192.168.70.0 so we cannot initiate traffic directly on r2 loopback we have to initiate traffic on some IP address which is local to R1 and that is I believe 136.1.1.21 that's the best IP address here so now what we can do is we can initiate traffic on firewall internal interface for example 136.1 or le let's take uh, basically virtual IP address I'll update the task here which virtual IP address you need to take, uh, take here in task 5 so go ahead and Create a policy first. Policy, for example, says there is so much traffic on cleanup rule. Okay, so R1 to R2. So R1 here is um, 150.1.1.1. Uh, I will use the same subnet here. Perfect. Destination IP address can never be direct 160. Dot one dot one dot one subnet IP address, so it should be something mm, NAT hyphen one thirty six one one two one, and you can use so one or two. So I will suggest to use two two or two zero two, for example. So I'll update that in a task. So you have to use this IP address, not the other IP address. Otherwise, there will be a clash of IP addresses uh, in the lab. So, 136.1.121.202. Perfect. So, we will initiate traffic on this IP address. Whatever services are required, you can mention here. I need, I'm good with talent and ICMP, for example. And then action accept, logging in. 
perfect go to nat rule uh, source will be 150.1.1.1.1 traffic will come on this nat address which is 202 now destination we have to translate that's for sure for example do we have specific object port 160 no we don't have should click on node host r2 hyphen 160.1.1.1 and 160.1.1.1 perfect so we have object there so we have translated destination ip address now we need to translate the source ip address as well why because this r2 also does not have any route so r2 doesn't know how to reach again response uh, how to reach back to 150 address so this r2 can talk to only 136.1.1.2 network so what we can do is right click add hide new node host fw hyphen 136.1.1.2.102 that's a firewall interface address we can do source net from this ip address perfect 136.1.1.2.102 now we have security policy not rule in place I want to add a proxy app. So this time let's add a proxy app from CLI. Uh, add prop, not add, 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 add ARP, and then proxy app, and then IP version 4 for which we have to add that is 136, 1121. I believe we did use 202. Let me verify again. Uh, 136.1.121.202 perfect 136.1.121.202 and then interface this time it is ethernet 1 perfect save config push changes and next is test if security policy proxy app and not rule is okay we should be able to see response back from r2 loopback but we will initiate traffic on 136.1.121.202 address uh, 202 address perfect okay let's wait and then we can test how does it work Okay, almost done. <coughs> Sorry. Ah, okay. So I'm on R1 now. I will do a ping on 136.1.121.202 and source interface we can force as 150.1.1.1. Awesome. So I can ping 136.1.121.202 from this loopback. And if you go back to tracker, verify the logs, we should see source and destination both are now getting translated. So source is 150.1.1.1, destination is 136.1.121.202 and source is being translated with the firewall interface IP address and destination is 160. So effectively we are getting response back from 160 address, which is R2 loop back. Okay. Uh, Let's move to next task. Make sure no routing exists on both routers. Okay. Configure a new loopback on R2 using IP address this. So let's do it one by one. So routing definitely it is not there because we did remove in task five. And now task says to create a loopback on R2. Okay. Uh, R2. Go to configuration right now run show interface if you do we have just one loopback set interface loopback loopback 0 address 150.1.1.1.5 someone was saying in last class uh, multiple IP addresses are not allowed on loopback so you can see it can be done so I am creating a new loopback basically and on the same interface 
which is loopback zero. Let me do a comment and run show interface. So I have 160 as well as 150.1.1.5. Perfect. Now it says create appropriate security policy and do other changes if if required. Okay. Configure NAT so that R1 loopback should be able to access newly created loopback on R2. So that's the example of overlapping networks. So R1, let me show you how it is overlapping. So R1 also has show interfaces 150.1.1.1.1 slash 24. So if I do a ping on 150.1.1.5 from this R1, this traffic will never reach to router because router will treat this as a part of local subnet and there will be R broadcast and locally router will try to identify that IP address so it will never reach to R2 and let's see how we can implement overlapping networks concept is very much similar to the last task which we have done now and one more change is required so let's see what that changes security policy uh, Again, uh, I will update IP addresses here, what all IP addresses you have to use. So I will update in task 5 and 6. So create another rule. Name the rule as overlapping networks. Source is 150.1.1.0 and new object I will create. That is 136.1.1.2.1.202 we did use, here I will use 203. So 136.1.1.2.1.203. Perfect. Awesome. So we have source, we have destination. Uh, I have these two services again. Copy and login enabled. Go to NAT rules. NAT tool is source will remain same destination will be newly created uh, loop back uh, sorry virtual IP 203 10 and then source has to be translated because there is no routing so let me do source and again with the fireball interface and then uh, Destination should be mm -mm, 160.1.1.1. No, no, sorry, not 160. Destination is mm, R2 hyphen 150.1.1.5. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So we have 150.1.1.0, traffic will be initiated on 203 IP address, source will be translated with this 202 uh, which is the firewall interface and destination art will be done with 150.1.1.5. That's very much similar to the last task. Now what extra change we need to do to make this working? If you go to topology and in topology if you see the ethernet 1 interface so this interface says complete 150 network is behind Ethernet 1 and now in the firewall configuration we are doing a change it says 203 IP address has to be natted with 150.1.1.5 IP address so there will be a conflict so let's see how that conflict is there so topology says 150.1.1.0 is behind Ethernet 1 now traffic will come on firewall on 203 netted address that address will do a NAT with 150.1.1.5 firewall will do a lookup and firewall will try to send the traffic back via Ethernet 1 so I need to add a static route towards this interface Ethernet 2 and then we need to update the topology as well so that this connection should work uh, so for that what I will do is go to firewall set static route 
through 150.1.1.5 slash 32 next hop gateway address and that address is 136.1.1.2.12 and then on save config go to dashboard again Uh, okay so go to groups we have already this group and in this group I need to add that 150.1.1.1.5 object so that when response comes firewall should be able to identify that traffic is behind this interface perfect okay mm, 203 we need to add a proxy ARP as well This time for 203. Awesome. And then save config. Done. Policy push. And let's see how it goes. So you need to do a focus here security policy, NAT policy, and then to avoid the address spoofing conflict, I have to add a slash 32 route towards Ethernet 2. And then I need to update the topology as well, which I did by adding an IP address in the group. Then we added uh, proxy ARP for this 203 IP address. And if I feel everything is in place, so I should be able to reach uh, 150.1.1.5 from R1 loopback once that policy is pushed. Uh, let's wait. Okay, back to R1 for testing. So ping 136.1.1.2.0.3 The interface 150.1.1.1 So it will do a destination NAT, source NAT, proxy R, address spoofing all set and I am able to ping. And if you go to tracker, we should be able to see that in the logs as well. 150, 136, 1121, 203 source is being translated with uh, 136, 112, 102, which is firewall interface IP address, and then we have translated destination, which is 150.1.1.5. Perfect. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching this video series from Troika System. Let's see what is there in the next two videos. Thanks.